Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. All I want to do is wear pajamas, drink tea and crochet on. And you know the next time you go to the washroom can you go for me too? <laughs> I don't got time for things to slow me down and without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Baby Shower Baby Blanket. It's been designed by me and if you actually think you recognize the design you could be accurate because this is actually the study of geometry but done as a square. So I was requested to change the shape back when the launch of the study of geometry happened and I did figure it out but I decided to uh, figure it out and keep this project a secret. So what I have today is that some people like just to go through the stitching journey. Not worry about any colors but you can change colors as often as you want to and I figured out all the different stitches that were used in the study of geometry in order to keep it as a square and I did my testing and etc. So we do have a crochet diagram available to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple examples of this sample here as well as the lovey size that you can decide to do for yourself. So here's the main example and you crochet rounds 1 through 7. Once you get 7 done rounds 8 through 16 is the repeat of this entire thing and you just keep going in sequence of 8 through 16 and it will always stay in balance. You can go as big as you want to go so you can make it even bigger than a baby blanket. This is 38 by 38. Now using the same mathematics you can do a smaller version. It just means that you stop sooner so that you have a lovey size. So if you're not sure what a lovey size is sometimes the loveys have faces that pop out at the center which you can apply to if you would like to do that like little stuffies. But what it is is that the parent on the go cannot always take the big blanket with them. So usually the lovey size is smaller so that you can take this into your luggage or your bag and take it with your baby so that the baby feels at comfort even though it's a smaller size. So you can make two identical, one regular size, one lovey size. So the lovey size is a to-go size. So let's go to the crochet diagram next to show you what's up with that. So here's the copy of the diagram. It is available for download. It's a free pattern as I uh, always do. And what we do is we start off right in the center. So usually in crochet diagrams you have more than just one side showing. I'm not very good at being able to do that. I don't know how to do that yet. It's been a couple years for me learning this program. And that's just the way it is. So what I have here is that when we go to start this is uh, showcasing one side. You can see the skipping stitches that are happening and what you need to pay attention to is that there's a right side and a wrong side. Now I just put the wrong side on this side of the graph here and the right side here but it doesn't have to be done that way. So when you flip over the blanket in order to do right side or wrong side you can be on the same corner. It's just for demonstration purposes I thought it was easier just to put it onto the one side. What you have to pay attention to the most in order to keep the sequence is that the 10th and the 11th row two in a row are both on the wrong side. So that will allow you to keep the sequence to give you the texture that this blanket has to offer. So those are the two rounds that you gotta pay attention to the most. So I'm going to take you all the way throughout this whole thing and once you get to the 16th row you can repeat. This is row number 8 again and you just go 8 through 16 as many times as you want to. The baby blanket that I've shown you has a special sequence and you can see that in the pattern as well. But if you wanna finish off on a 16th round you can always do so or anywhere really. It's completely up to you. So it's a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook. I'm gonna use some Karen 1 pound and I'm gonna demonstrate how to do today's pattern. So let's begin and I'm gonna create a slip knot. And to start off with your 5 millimeter size H you are going to chain 4. So 1, 2, 3 and 4 and slip stitch into the beginning chain and yarning over. So just wrap the yarn and pull through and create the center ring of your afghan or your blanket. And you're just gonna use this and you're gonna put the straggler around that so that it gets stuck up underneath the stitches. Let's go to the first row. So let's do the first round or row. And what we want to do is just chain three. So one, two, three. That counts as a double crochet and in the center of this same ring make sure the stragglers are around so it gets stuck underneath so you don't have to sew anything later. You are just going to double crochet two more times. And this will be considered one side of your blanket. To turn the corner it will always be the same. 
it'll always be chain two and in the same ring you're going to apply three more double crochets this time. So one, two, and three. Then you're going to chain two and in the center of the ring again three more double crochet. So we have one, two, and three. You're going to chain two to turn again and do three more double crochet. So I'm gonna show you a corner join that uh, Jeannie showed me many years ago which I love but if you don't like it you can always chain two and slip stitch to the top or what I prefer is that I'm going to half double crochet and join it to the top. So I'm just gonna wrap the hook and going into the top of the first chain three pull through and pull through all three and this will be considered a corner this stitch and that's how you're gonna do it. Let's move along to the next round, round number two. So if you went over the straggler in the last round what you can do is just turn it and just pull on it and then you can just safely cut that out of the way. This is a great pattern to just do with one ball of yarn uh, like as far as not changing any color but if you'd like to change color you can do so at any time but today I will not be demonstrating that. So here's where we finished for row number two or round two we're gonna turn our work and go and look at the back side and now we're gonna do round two. So you're going to begin by chaining three. So one, two, three and in the same space you're going to apply another double crochet. You're then going to chain two, skip the first stitch and go to the second, it's the middle one and you're going to double crochet there and then chain one, skip the next stitch and go right for the corners. Here's a tip, when it's double crochet on the corners almost all of them have two double crochets, chain two, two double crochet in a corner. There's only one round where it does not happen like that. So let's turn our work and chain two and two more double crochet in this same corner and we're gonna do the other three sides. So just chain one, skip one, one single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one and you're back already on a corner so it'll be two double crochet. Chain two, and two double crochet. Chain one, skip one, one double crochet in the next and you're going all the way around in the same fashion. And on the very final side you're chaining one, skip one, one single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one and you're back in the same first corner so you'll put in two double crochet and you'll join it with a half double crochet to the top of the first chain three. And that is your final corner and that was round number two. You're going to turn your work and let's do round number three. In round number three it's going to start and you're gonna chain one. So this is a single crochet round. Whenever there's a single crochet round it's always the same for the corners. It's always one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Just remember that. When you come in start the first one you've already chained one so you're just gonna go single crochet and then in each one of the stitches and spaces you are going to apply one single crochet into each one of the elements. So this helps stabilize and create that space that's desirable in the texture look. So go right into the space and each stitch as you go around. And then as you hit your corners it's one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. And then you start the next side. I'll just show you one more side. So right into each stitch and each space all the way to the next corner and corners are single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Please do this all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of round number three in just a moment. So coming up all the way back around just filling in the stitches and the spaces 
and you're back on the original uh, corner. So single crochet and join it with a half double crochet to the beginning single crochet to form the last space. Let's turn to work and move on to round number four. In round number four we're going to do single crochet but we're only gonna play within the front loop only which will give a texture look on the other side. So this is the back side of the work. It's on the wrong side. So to start a new corner you're going to chain one and you'll single crochet right into the space. The rest of the single crochets you'll play on the front loops only. So when you go in you always see two strands and that's one whole stitch. If you go into the strand that's closest to you that is a front loop and if you dive into the strand that's away from you the furthest that's the back loop. So what I want you to do is just stay within the front loop. So just dive up underneath only capture one loop and single crochet. And so you're just gonna do that all the way across. Really just slide it on up. So instead of sliding it across you're just picking that first one out and what this is doing is it's creating a little texture line that's on the front which is part of the noticeable uh, desirable look on the front side of the blanket. So once you get them all done you're in the corner. So one single crochet, chain two and one single crochet in the regular space and then just start doing your front loops only. So this is what it's gonna look like. See this line? That's what you're creating and so you're gonna do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number four in just a moment. Okay, I'm just coming to the very last corner. This is where I started. You're going to go right into the corner and then just reach on over with the half double crochet join to the top of the beginning single crochet. Turn your work and now we're moving on to round number five. And so you will see the texture line has been applied. Let's move on to number five. In round number five we're looking at the right side of the work still and just letting you know and you're gonna chain three and then in the same corner space one more double crochet. So you're back on double crochets for this round and so the corners will be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So in each one of the stitches across it's just one double crochet. So you got a nice easy uh, round to do just double crocheting it and that provides a nice landing spot for the texture as well. So just go all the way around one uh, double crochet in each and then the corners two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and I'll see you at the end of number five in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and in the last space is going to be two double crochet followed by um, just a join to the top of the chain three with the half double crochet join. This is considered the right side of the work just to keep an eye on things and it will become very obvious as we do the next round as you turn your work and let's do round number six. As you do round number six you're looking at the back side so the wrong side because we're about to do faux popcorn which requires you to look at the back side. So to do this stitch you're going to then just chain one and do one single crochet in the corner but before you move on in the same corner I need you to apply a treble. So wrap the hook twice and go right into the corner space and apply a treble. So even though it's a, a, a neat round you gotta make sure you have this combination in the corner space. Starting in the very first one this one was a treble so the next one has to be a single. And you're gonna alternate between the two stitches so the next one must be a treble. And the trebles are being forced to squat down which is creating the full popcorn. So if that was treble the next one has to be a single. And you're gonna keep doing the opposite to each other as you work your way across. And the secret is, is how you do your corners. So you can turn your work at any point just to see how that's coming out the other side. It's really beautiful and it's part of maybe one of the reasons why you're clicked on today's video is just to see this texture. So the very last stitch before you end up in a corner should be a single crochet if it's right, if the counts are right. Now in your corner you have to apply one treble first, then one single and now you're ready to turn. So chain two and then begin another side. So you start off with a single first, 
and then a treble into the same corner space and then you start picking up the side that you know you know it to be. So the first one in the side should be a single and then a treble and etc. I need you to do this all the way around. This is round number six of doing the faux popcorn. I'll be back in just a moment. As you come to the very end you want to complete it. So the next one in the corner to start is a treble and then you're going to single and then you're going to join it with a half double crochet to the first single. And that was round number six. You're gonna turn your work and now you can start seeing the texture happening. Isn't that beautiful? And now you're going to go on to round number seven and this is the last round before we start the repeating of the pattern. So in this round it's straight double crochet so you're just gonna chain three right where you are. Make sure you're looking at the right side so that all the faux popcorn. So you will not have any questions now if you're looking at the right side or wrong side now that this faux popcorn is in. So in the same corner you're going to apply one double crochet. So you have a total of chain three and two. So each corner here on this round is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Starting in the very first single crochet that you have just get yourself started. It's just gonna be one double crochet in each of the stitches across. So these ones here you just gotta tilt it back towards you just to get the top of those trebles. And once you get used to it it's pretty easy. And then so the next one is a single there that you see. So it's double and everything. So it's right there. So you just gotta tilt it forward towards you just to get access to it. And this is gonna really make those faux popcorn look amazing. So just apply one double crochet in each of the stitches across two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in each of the corners and I'll meet you at the end of this round and this is round number seven. When you come back around you're just going to apply two double crochet into the very first corner that you started with and then join it and this will be the ending of round number seven. So just do that and we're gonna turn and work and start on the wrong side first but now this is the start of the repeat so let's go back to the diagram. So as we start this we're now going to on round number eight and what we're going to do is that this is a repeat now from eight to sixteen. So when you start row number eight again it's still the same amount of counts coming out of a corner. It's just gonna be wider obviously. So within each uh, time we go around it just gets wider and wider. So this means then there will be more of these uh, popcorn that will be sitting inside of those and everything will equal out to each other. So as we begin you're gonna start on the wrong side right here on the eighth row and, or the eighth round and then we're gonna continue. So we have to keep an eye on the tenth and eleventh and I will tell you that when we get there. So let's start the eighth row now. So let's start the eighth row and the reason why we want the eighth row to be on the wrong side is that when we apply the popcorn in the next round the popcorns naturally pop out to the side you're looking at so it has to be the right side. So you're gonna start off and you're gonna chain three. And then in the same corner I need you to apply two more double crochet. This is the exception side and so what you're going to do then is just to make sure that you have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in each of the corners. You're going to skip the first two out and you're going to immediately go into the third one away and you're going to apply this V stitch. So the V stitch will be one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet into the same stitch. Once you do the first one like that you're gonna skip the next two and go to the third one over and apply another V stitch. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet and you're gonna do this all the way to the next corner. So skipping two, go to the third, double, chain two and double. So I'll meet you close to the next corner in just a moment. As you're approaching the next corner I'm skipping two and going into the one after that. So it's the third one away so a V stitch again and this should place you so that you have two stitches before the corner and this will happen every time that you do this uh, particular round but it will just be wider of course in the future. So right here in the corner you're going to apply three double crochet. So one, two and three, chain two and then three more double crochet. So we have one, two and three. So as you start this side you're skipping the first two out so the one and two and go to the third and start with your V stitch again. And you'll do this all the way to the next corner and etc. So please do this all the way around. I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. 
So I'm coming up to the close of the ending of the rotation. This is number eight and you're just gonna go right into the first space that you started with the first corner. Apply three double crochet first and then just join it with the half double crochet to the beginning to the top of the beginning chain three. Okay, so let's turn and work and you should be looking at the right side of the project now as we begin the ninth row. So we're now going to apply popcorn in each one of the center of the V stitches. So the number of popcorn is dependent on those being in there. So we have to build ourselves from the corner to those spots. So that's what we're going to do now. So we should be looking at the right side of the project because the popcorn naturally comes out towards you when you make it. Let's begin. You're going to chain three. We'll count as your first double crochet and you'll double crochet into the same one. You're gonna double crochet in each of these here, the, the three. And what you have to watch for the most is the next part and it's right here. So this V stitch here because the corner is right here you're only gonna chain one and then do your popcorn in the center of that V stitch. So to do the popcorn it's four double crochet into the same V stitch. So let's just do four. So we have one, two, three and four. Once the four are in you're going to drop it come to the first one of the grouping of four and go from the front to the back. Loop it just takes a few seconds and then pull it through. Now to move to the next one you have to chain two. So one and two and then popcorn in the next. So it's four double crochet. So one, two, three and four. Drop the first one of the grouping of four pick it up, pull through and chain two. So what I want you to know is that when we started the first popcorn we only chained one to get to there but then there's chaining two in between. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna meet you on the next one right here and I'll show you how to start and go into this corner as you're coming across. So please continue to popcorn until the next corner where I'll meet you up in a moment. So I'm in the last V stitch I'm just putting the popcorn in that last one. So there's four double crochet, drop, insert, pick up and pull. Now you're only gonna chain one. So leading into this we only chain one and then you come into the remaining of these double crochets before the corner. So it's one double crochet in each and then your corners are what you already know. So it's two double crochet, one and two. Chain two to turn and then back into the same corner for two double crochet. So let's just quickly review another side. So just you're gonna do the first three as a double crochet and before you start the first popcorn you have to only chain one first and then coming into the popcorn, sorry coming into the V stitch you'll make a popcorn. Okay, and once that first popcorn is made you chain two to go to the next popcorn and etc. And I just showed you how to finish a side. So you do the same thing all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the round in just a moment. So I'm coming to the end of the round. This is the last popcorn. There's only a chain one there and I will fill in the last double crochets that are here. You're going to notice is that it's kind of buckling in a little bit. Do not worry about that yet because the next round is gonna stabilize that. Okay, it does a nice job of framing it. So in the last uh, corner it's two double crochet and then joining it to the top of the first chain three. Now we're gonna turn and work and start on the wrong side. So for rounds number 10 and 11 we're both on the wrong side. So when we get around uh, the next round we're just gonna continue to go in the same rotation. We're not gonna flip it. So let's begin round number 10. So in round number 10 we're gonna fill in the spaces in between the popcorn plus uh, use the popcorn as well. So the thing that you need to watch for is that remember we chained one here. So there's only gonna be one single uh, double crochet in this particular 
uh, uh, space but in the rest of them between the popcorns there's always gonna be two. So just remember the ones just after the corner is only one and the ones just before the corner is only one. So if your stitch count becomes off chances are it's gonna be here if you keep doing twos all the way across. So let's begin the next round. So let's uh, start with round number 10. You're gonna chain 10, sorry you're gonna chain three and then you're gonna double crochet into the same one. You're going to apply one double crochet in each of the stitches that you see. Okay, so each of these double crochets gets another double crochet and what you're looking for is the space which is coming up right now. So in the space this is your first popcorn so only in the space it's one double crochet and then in the top of this popcorn it's one only double crochet. Now the rest of the spaces in between the popcorns is going to have two double crochet and then one into the top of the popcorn. And you'll do that all the way to the end of this. So there's gonna be two here and then one into the next. If you accidentally put in uh, two into the first space you know you can always just subtract out a stitch somewhere if you accidentally do that, I actually did that once. Just so you know, so, so instead of frogging everything back out and you realize it in the next round, you can just uh, do a two together stitch and, get, and, and eliminate a stitch if you have to. Be creative. It's your stitching journey after all. And if you don't tell anybody, probably nobody would notice. So coming across, uh, and I'm using my hand, I can feel these popcorns in behind and I can feel with these these hands here there's no more popcorn left. So in this one here there's two, one into the last popcorn and just make sure there's only one into the space between the popcorn and the corner. And then you're gonna start with the stitches that you get to the corner with. You don't hear me counting just it, I'm only worried about those spaces in between popcorns. And this will settle down any buckling that you saw. So in the corner it's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So starting in the next side you're just gonna start and fill in the double crochets from what you see. And I'm worried about that first space before the first popcorn. There's, make sure there's only one into that space and then do your tops of your popcorn and making sure that there's two double crochets in between the popcorns. So I've already shown you how to finish off one side. So just use that as your memory. Go back in time if you have to. Scroll back in the video and I will see you at the end of this round in a moment. This is round number 10. So I'm coming around and the last space, the corner space is a two double crochet and join it to the top of the first with a half double crochet. Do not turn your project around just leave it as is and you're going to start round number 11. So I can direct your attention to what we did here. You know how we skip stitches? We're going to be doing that again. It's just wider that's all. So you're just gonna start off and you'll chain three and you'll put in one double crochet into the same corner. Chain one and you're gonna skip the first one out and go to the second. Chain one skip the next one and double crochet into the one after that. You're creating these spaces. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Please do this all the way to the next corner. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm getting close to the first corner and if your counts are right when you chain one after this one you, you gotta skip one before you go into the corner. If there's, if you're going there and there's no stitch to skip, chances are it's down here when you did the last one you know how you did there. You might have missed one going down here or you might have missed something in the spacing or, or whatever. But what I would try to do is just to make sure that you um, you can fake it or make it right. So whatever you need to do in order to correct yourself. So the corners are going to be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. The pattern is sound as far as like testing wise. I've done it several times and our testers did as well. So you should end up exactly where I'm showing you. So when you start the next side just chain up one, skip the first one out and one single or one double in the next and then chain one, skip one, 
and etc. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 11. I'm gonna leave you a little tip here while I'm completing round number 11. So for example, say uh, one round you're ending up right where you should and the next side that you're not. So this side's good and this side you seem to be short a stitch. What I would do is calculate the number of these spaces that you had on the round or on the side that worked and then count the number of spaces on the side that you think you're short. And what I would do is force a stitch to happen regardless. And how you can do that is that if you end up for example um, right at the end and you're in the last stitch and you still needed that extra space you can still use the last stitch here chain one and then do your corner just to force that extra space to happen. It does matter in the future but just make sure that it's the same amount of spaces that you had in the other rounds just in case you are short. So that's something that you can do. I don't know if anybody would really notice it unless you said something but it's a great option to do and it gives you an exit ramp without having to take apart your work in case you notice that. So I will be back in a moment. So I'm coming back around and finishing the last corner. It's two double crochet in and then just join it with the half double crochet to the top. This is the end of the 11th round. So we're still on the wrong side. So we now wanna flip to the good side to the right side as we continue our journey into round number 12. Okay, let's begin round number 12. This is a single crochet round. So just chain up one and in the corners it'll be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So start your first corner with just a single crochet and you'll finish that corner when you get back around. So each one of these double crochets will have a single crochet and if there's a space which there is right here just fill that space in with a single crochet. So this is a nice easy round and it's these single crochets that give it the concept of these um, the stitch work just holding apart from each other to keep it consistent looking. So fill in each one of the stitches and spaces with a single crochet. Your corners are one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet and I'll see you at the end of number 12 in just a moment. I'm coming to the end of the 12th row here or the 12th round and going into every stitch and then in the corner space it's one single crochet and then join it with the half double crochet. You're gonna need to turn this now to the wrong side so the full popcorn is away from you and let's begin the 13th round. If you recall back on round number four when we did that um, front post single crochet and it creates this line that's what we're doing now on this round. So you'll start when chain one and one single crochet in the corner. So the corners are again in this particular round are one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So starting in the first one just go into the front loop only. I already showed you how to do that and you'll do that all the way across until you get to the next corner and then again it is one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So make sure that you do single crochet in the front loops only when you're not in the corner and that will create that line of work that you can see on the other side. Please do this all the way around. This is lucky round 13. So I'm coming all the way back around. I have one single crochet in the final space. Join it to the beginning single crochet with a half double crochet join. We're going to flip our work now and get to the right side of the work and move on to round number 14. In 14 we're going to start right now. So nice easy row for you. 14 you're gonna chain three and then you'll put a double crochet in the same spot as the join. Make sure you are looking at the right side so your popcorns will be jumping out. Your so is your full popcorn from before. And so it's just one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way across. Corners are two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And please do this all the way around for round number 14. When you get back around you just gotta make sure you put two double crochet into the first corner space and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. So now we're going to with the half double crochet. So now you're gonna turn your work and do round number 15 and 15 is the po faux popcorn so you gotta make sure that you are on the back side and the wrong side when you go to start this round. So round number 15 is next. So round number 15 you've already done it before in round number six and we're gonna start off and you're gonna chain one. In the same corner you're going to apply one single crochet first and then a treble into the corner. It's exactly what you did before. Then 
the very next stitch is gonna be a single crochet. So the single crochet will start you off and so then you'll do treble, single, treble, single all the way to the end and I'll see you on the first, cor first corner in just a moment. So coming around to the first side here, the last one before the end is a single crochet. That's just a matter of keeping in the count and then your first one into the corner it has to be a treble and then a single and then you're ready to turn. So chain two and then back into the same corner, single crochet, treble and then you'll start the next side here with the single and complete this all the way around. This is round number 15 and I'll be back in just a moment. I'm coming to the end of number 15 and we're just putting a, that first treble into the corner space then a single and then we're just going to join with the half double crochet to the first single like that. We're gonna turn our work and do round number 16 which is the end of the repeat section. So let's do number 16 next. So 16th is the final row. You should be looking at the good side. So your faux popcorns and your popcorns and all the fun stuff should be facing you. So because when you start uh, round number eight again, eight is on the wrong side. So just make sure that you keep a note of that. So just chain up one and just do one single crochet into the first corner and just apply one single crochet in each of the stitches. So that's the first one is a single and then the treble you just gotta tilt it forward to get to it and then you'll go right into the treble and then a single and you're just applying one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across. This makes that popcorn just jump off the blanket which is really visually text, uh, visually interesting. So continue this around in the corners. It'll be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet and I'll be back at the end of the round in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around on number 16 and just filling those in and one single crochet in the final space and then join with a half double crochet. So now you're going to start again if this is the end of the blanket for you. So if you keep repeating this is a great round to finish on number 16 but the blanket that I did is got a little bit more information to it. So I'm gonna cover that next. It is written in the pattern but I will verbally tell you and we're going to cover what the repeating is but again number 16 is a really good spot to stop as well. So let's continue into that information and I'll be right back. This is part of the free download that you can have. So for the baby shower blanket size which is about 38 inches square. So you're going to repeat 8 through 16 twice. Okay so you'll do it two more times. Then you'll repeat 8 to 10 just once and then you'll repeat just 12 one time and then that will give you to the 38 inches of the full size for the baby blanket. If you would like to continue to make this bigger and bigger you can continue to just to repeat 8 through 16 and you can continue to do that as many times as you want. 16 as I mentioned the round number is a great uh, spot to stop. For the lovey size which is approximately 24 inches square you'll repeat 8 through 16 just one more time then 8 through 10 once and then repeat then 12 one last time and then that's where you're gonna finish off. So that's what I'm gonna leave you for and let me just show you how to fasten off just in case you are a new crochet. So once you get at the end and you get to the size that you would like to get then what you can do is just trim your yarn. I keep these little samples for myself so I can remember uh, my stitch combinations in the future. So you'll just need a tapestry needle. You can weave it in with the hook but it will fall out on you so it's better for this. Turn it to the back side to the wrong side and just drag it through the stitch work. Don't mess with the edge. Okay, don't touch the edge. Just stay on the inside and come through once and when you pull on it don't pull to the point you're gonna change the shape. So then you'll go through a slightly different path back in the opposite direction but you're not quite done. You're gonna come back on in and you are going to then finish that off a third time. So your blanket can never stretch in three directions at the same time. So that's what makes that permanent and then you can cut this right down into the project and you should be good to go. Anytime you have a loose end 
um, you'll wanna do it that way and therefore you'll have a nice finishing. And then to block it if you would like to, if it's not sitting completely flat, just dampen it a little bit and just lay it on a flat surface, let dry and because if it's acrylic yarn it'll hold its shape forever and then any kind of wool product you can block it but then once you wash it again you'll have to reblock. So that's just something to keep in mind. So this is the baby shower blanket. It's a pattern by me and hopefully you had a great day today and we'll hope to see you again. Bye bye.